Welcome to Policy On Demand. I'm Andrew Pryor. Last week, the IRS released a strategic operating plan setting forth a framework for how it plans to use nearly $80 billion in additional funding provided by the Inflation Reduction Act. Kevin Brown joins us to discuss the strategic operating plan. Kevin, welcome. Thank you, Andrew. So, Kevin, maybe we start, um, you know, the IRS and Treasury have described this as a detailed roadmap for how it plans to implement the $80 billion in additional funding. Can you walk us through some of the highlights and, and what you think are the key takeaways? Well, it's, it's very high level. It's 150 pages, but I think probably if you're a critic, you'd say, well, there's not a lot of detail. It's more sort of a strategic view of where the organization should go over the next five to 10 years. There are five really categories. Uh, one is service. Second would be what I would call quicker resolution. Third would be enforcement. Fourth would be modernizing the technology. And then finally, uh, hiring and retaining a quality workforce. Broad categories, Andrew. Um, sort of what's missing is specifics about how do you implement each one of those areas. Clearly, you want to improve service. You want to improve enforcement. You want to improve the technology. But some of those things can't be forecast out five to 10 years. So we've got the roadmap, but I've already heard people say, particularly on Capitol Hill, that there's there's missing key missing details, and you alluded to that. Yeah. So what are the key missing details in your mind, and what additional information might we see as they continue to roll this out over the you know next few months and, and even years? Well, I'd say the greatest source of curiosity is okay. How many people are you hiring? What categories of employees are they going to be, and when are you going to hire them? And while it's not in the plan, they have since communicated to the Congress that they're in the next two years, so by fiscal year 25, that would be the fall of 2025, they plan on hiring 59,000 new people. Roughly 60% will be uh, enforcement, 40% will be service. Now that 59,000 is sort of two buckets. One is 32,000 people, uh, sort of brand new, and then they've got to replace another 27,000 people who are just gonna leave through normal attrition to retirement. That's hard. Um, 59,000 people, it's a 45% increase in the total size of the IRS in a two-year span. I'm a bit skeptical they can pull that off. Uh, it's a tremendous strain to bring that many people on board, to do background checks on people, and just to get them to, to sign on. And then secondly, it's a tight labor market. Um, as we see, um, it's hard to find quality people these days. So that's, that's going to be a real challenge. So they're bringing on all these uh, new you know, revenue agents, for example. Um, Presumably, they have to be trained up. So what's the impact on compliance? The rule is it's roughly one to two years before a revenue agent is fully trained and op able to operate on his or her own. Uh, well, that doesn't happen through just sitting in a, in a classroom or reading a book. You, what they do is they take senior revenue agents or senior revenue officers offline to train the new people. So short term, you actually have an erosion of the number of audits and the amount of collection activity that, that takes place. A couple of years down the road, when these people are really uh, you know, fully operational, different. Uh, at that point, your coverage rates go way, way up. And they're, they're careful also in the report to talk about where they want to target those resources. Uh, first being, they will not target them at taxpayers making less than $400,000. And they will pay special attention to large corporations, large partnerships, and high net worth individuals. Um, they tie that really to sort of fairness, that all strata of taxpayers should be examined on a regular basis, um, which I think is a good observation. I, it, the IRS's own research doesn't indicate that's where the tax gap lies, not the lion's share of the tax gap. It lies um, in other areas. So I think that's a key question, too, is can they, can they stick to that over the years if the results don't um, come in the way they want to uh, when those audits are being wrapped up? Yeah, thanks. So, you know, there are a lot of elements to this roadmap, but I think the one that many of our viewers may be interested in is this, this goal of increasing enforcement uh, with respect to large corporations, high net worth individuals. So what should they be uh, doing to prepare for the future? Well, there are clearly going to be more audits. It won't be immediate, but there will be more audits. You're going to have more chief counsel attorneys. You're going to have more specialists. You're going to have more revenue agents. So I think you're looking at wider coverage, meaning more companies, both partnerships and corporations will be touched, more high net worth individuals, and they'll be more in depth uh, where they'd come in and they'd maybe look at a particular issue quickly and try to move on. I, I think it's going to be different because they're going to have the resources to do this. Also, uh, there are some opportunities there um, where they, the compliance assurance program was at one point thought to be 
consuming too many resources, they now have the ability to broaden it, to allow more taxpayers in so they can get certainty quicker. They can get it on the front end before they even file a return. So there's some cause for optimism. Uh, on the other hand, I'd say probably would behoove you to spend time preparing because I think the audits are going to be more frequent and more in-depth. Well, Kevin, thanks as always for joining us to share your insights. My pleasure. Be sure to check out the PwC Insight on the IRS Strategic Operating Plan included in the description of this episode. As always, thank you for spending this time with us. We'll see you next time.